Hey, John here. Most of you have already watched the layout and mounting of the contents on the display board for this shadow box. So yes, we are doing this out of order. We are going to build the box a little faster than normal. After all, it's just a rectangle with a few flags. So I will slow down if I think you should hear my thought process, because even though I've made many shadow boxes, no two are alike, and I still change and modify things on the fly. Hey, if I didn't, I couldn't say I make this up as I go along. So remember, you always measure the width of your folded flag before you begin. That will give you the depth of the box. Once you know that, you can cut your boards to depth. I started with two six feet long pieces of red oak. After having folded and measured my flag, I knew I could get away with a two inch deep box. So I cut both boards at two and a half inches. This will give me space for my glass groove and my bottom rabbit. The first thing I did was lay out the jacket and measure it from head to stern. See how I use those navy terms there? The jacket was 33 inches long, so I probably will at a minimum add an inch and a half to the top and bottom. So we are looking around 36 inches tall. So far a pretty tall box, but I have made taller. Now let's figure out how I find the width. I know that the owner wants to place patches on the outside of each jacket. I hear he is a huge Yankees fan. So the average patch is about three inches. You don't want them to look cramped, so I'm going to make the box extend seven inches beyond the jacket. In my head, I'm thinking two inches on either side of each patch. So I move the jacket seven inches away from the edge of the table. Since there are no trousers in this box, I am going to have the display board double as the display and the blood stripe. I will create an inch and a half blood stripe down the center and I want about six inches between the jackets. That will give me two inches between the blood stripe and each jacket. The last thing you want is a cramped box. So using a piece of scrap wood, I lay it out seven inches away from the BDU blouse. Then I measure from the end of the table to that piece. That measure is 46 inches. The last thing I want to stress is that you just don't build a jacket box and then try to make the jackets fit. Do not skip this process. Next I wanted to see how my flags would fit into the equation. So I grabbed some scrap pieces to act as the ensign crossbars. Then I realized that in order to get both flags into the box, it would even make it larger. And I wanted to make it smaller. We are talking adding another 6 inches to our already 36 inch measurement a 42 by 46 box. So it was at this point I made a phone call and spoke to the owner. I knew the box was going to be big but this thing was getting unruly and I talked him into allowing me to fold the bottom of each jacket. I assured him it would not be noticeable nor distract from the presentation and he agreed. Have I mentioned that I hate big and bulky? But this change actually allowed me to get the box down to 29 inches two off each of the sides as well. So now we are at a 29 by 44 inch box. Much better. So let's get cutting. My first cuts are now 29 inches followed by the 44 inch top and bottom pieces. So at this point we should have the entire frame cut out. Set your miter saw up to cut at 45 degree angles and then cut all four boards. Take all four pieces over to the table saw and cut your glass groove. Lay a piece behind the blade and raise the blade up until you are a little more than a quarter inch into the wood. This does not have to be perfect. And then set your fence so you're cutting down a quarter inch. Just use the Mark 1 eyeball. Then continue cutting all four pieces. Swap out your blade for your dados and then cut your back plate rabbit. You need to cut exactly half the width of the board and cut no more than a quarter inch deep. Use your backboard if you want to set the blade to the perfect depth. Then run all four pieces through. Just make sure you're cutting the right side of your board, which will be directly under your glass groove. Next we need to cut the ensign housing. Start by measuring the distance between your glass groove and your rabbit and then set your fence with that measurement. Cut at least a three foot long piece. This is for the ensign crossbars. If done right, you can place a piece of glass in the groove of one of your frame pieces and your crossbar should fit between the glass and be flush with the rabbit. Don't worry about the length. We will cut them both for length later. 
When I was trying to figure out the size of this box, I used some scrap pieces to get placement for the flags. I based those pieces off of the base of the folded flag, so I thought I would go ahead and use those same scrap pieces as guides for the size of the crossbars. So I just laid them on top of my board and marked my piece, and then I cut them to match. Now it's time to join my first corner. I take a square and slide it into the glass groove. Then I place my glue on both ends of the pieces that I'm about to join. I clamp the square tight to ensure my pieces are at a 45 degree angle. Then I clamp them downward into the tabletop so when I nail them in, it will not move. Since my corner is all clamped secure, I can simply flip it over and attach my first ensign crossbar. If your square extends far enough for you to rest your piece on, then great. But if not, take a scrap piece of glass or plexiglass and slip it into the glass groove. Then rest your crossbar on the glass and press into position. Take a speed square and ensure your crossbar is perfectly at a 45 degree angle. Since this is what your angles were cut to, you should have no problem getting this into position. Now remember that this is a big box, so if you really want to make it solid, you could always place some pocket holes on the crossbar and screw it in tight. I have done this in the past, but you have to be careful not to screw too tight because it will pull your angle past 90 degrees. While the first corner is drying, I go ahead and mount the other side to the top of the box. This should leave just the bottom of the box open at this point. After it is secure, I use the same steps that we just used to attach the second crossbar. Once in place, I secure it with one staple on each side. Don't forget to check the length of your staples to ensure they will not shoot through the crossbar. And don't attempt to shoot it at an angle or in the same direction as your crossbar. Simply cheat towards the flag side and shoot straight into the side of the box. With everything dry and secure, you can take a quick measurement of your backplate rabbit groove. Take that measurement, mark your backplate, and then take it to the table saw and cut it to fit. Now we can begin to build our display board. If you have already watched the mounting of the content video, then you know what we intend to design here. We are going to do two blue fields divided by a red blood stripe. This will simulate the uniform trousers. So take your bottom piece and just clamp it into position. Lay your foam board inside the box and then lay your box down over the foam board. Simply trace out the outline of your foam board. You can buy whatever thickness foam board you want, but I buy mine from Everything's a Dollar. Yeah, and we all know that everything is really a dollar twenty-five now. But well, besides that. But I get two quarter inch pieces and I glue them to get half an inch. Now you can buy a half an inch at a craft store, but you will pay more than double the amount for them. So that's why I do this. You don't have to go with a half an inch either, but it does come in handy when mounting ribbons and metal racks, along with brads for holding coins. It's your call. But once you have one cut, you can use it as a template to trace out the other side. If your box is smaller than mine and you extend past the middle, then just mark the center of your box and then trim that excess away. That way you can get both pieces in. But remember, we will be cutting these back to fit with the blood stripe when we put that in anyway. Now I place a rank in the center of the box to see if my initial assessment of an inch and a half still holds or if I need to go larger. But after measuring, I think this will look great. I take three quarters of an inch off of each one of my pieces. That will give me my inch and a half gap for my blood stripe. Normally, I would route with my signature 3 8 inch roundover before I even join any corners together. But like in all my videos, I don't edit out my mistakes. So before I started sanding is when I noticed I skipped this step. I usually do this before I join any of the pieces together or right after cutting my backplate rabbit. So, I quickly broke out my router table and I trimmed the entire box. So, after I had the perimeter routed, I did a quick sand. And I know no one wants to watch me sand, it's very boring. So, just remember this, for oak, I sand with 100 grit, then 120 grit, and then I finish with a 180 grit. You don't need to go any higher when you're dealing with red oak. I am going to stain this box in golden oak stain. As always, I simply wipe it on with a paper towel, and then I reapply 
the darker you want it. I now stay with the same process for felting all my display boards. I switch over to Elmer's glue. Don't use wood glue here. I thin it out so there are no clumps and there will be no bleed through. Once coated with glue, I flip it over, then lay my foam piece in position and trim away, leaving about a half an inch. Then I fold over the excess and tape the felt to the back of the piece. Okay, I always claim I'm an amateur and that I don't edit out my mistakes. Well, get a load of this one. What a chucklehead. I measured an inch and a half and then felted my piece. And when checking my fit, I realized I cut the piece to the length and never cut it to the height of the blood stripe. What a knucklehead. Wow. So, okay, I have to do some emergency surgery here and see if I can rescue this piece without having to start over. Okay, once I pulled that off, I did the same process for both of the blue fields on either side of the blood stripe, and then I placed them in the box. With your display boards complete, you can mount them to your back plate. Lay down a healthy coat of wood glue and set your pieces in place. Double check that your back plate is firmly up in the back plate rabbit before you do this. I place a little extra glue down where the blood stripe will be, and then I lay my pieces down into position. I take a paint scraper and I slide it across the joints to make sure no felt is bunching up. And then I weigh down my pieces until they dry. Take your bottom piece and use it to get the measurement for your plexiglass. I agree that glass would have been a better choice here, but this is not a standard size box, and if you were to get glass for this size box, it would need to be custom ordered and cost upward $200. That's without shipping, making this project out of the range of a do-it-yourselfer. And in the long run, more likely to break if you have to ship this box. So I stuck with plexiglass. Once your glass is cut to size, clamp down your frame to help you hold it in position when you slide in your plexiglass. Peel back about an inch around the perimeter so the protective layer does not get inserted into the glass groove while you insert your plexiglass. And this will also make removing it much easier later on. So then just slide in your plexiglass and ensure it is all the way in snug and tight. Flip your box onto its side and clamp down to hold it stable. Then take your bottom piece and apply wood glue to the bottom of the last two joints. Slide on your bottom piece, making sure everything is in alignment. While holding your bottom in place, lay the box back down and clamp it down to hold it in place so you can staple the bottom piece into position. Do this on both sides. Your last step is to place some clamps in position and squeeze the bottom piece on tight to ensure your wood glue has a good bond and enough time to cure. At this point, give the box at least 24 hours to ensure all your glue is cured. Then you can come back, place in your ensign or any other flags, and lay your box down over the display board and screw it into place. And that's it. You're ready to peel the protective layer and put it on display. If you liked how this box turned out, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you missed the video where I prepped the jackets for the display, a link will appear at the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.